January 10th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Genesis 18 and 19 from the Old Testament. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent during the hottest time of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing across from him. When he saw them, he ran from the entrance of the tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass by and leave your servant. Let a little water be brought so that you may all wash your feet and rest under the tree. And let me get a bit of food so that you may refresh yourselves since you have passed by your servant's home. After that, you may be on your way. All right, they replied, you may do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent and said to Sarah, Quick, take three measures of fine flour kneaded and make bread. Then Abraham ran to the herd and chose a fine tender calf and gave it to a servant who quickly prepared it. Abraham then took some curds and milk along with the calf that had been prepared and placed the food before them. They ate while he was standing near them under a tree. Then they asked him, Where is Sarah your wife? He replied, There, in the tent. One of them said, I will surely return to you when the season comes round again, and your wife Sarah will have a son. Now Sarah was listening at the entrance to the tent, not far behind him. Abraham and Sarah were old and advancing in years. Sarah had long since passed menopause. So Sarah laughed to herself, thinking, after I am worn out, will I have pleasure, especially when my husband is old too? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, will I really have a child when I am old? Is anything impossible for the Lord? I will return to you when the season comes round again, and Sarah will have a son. Then Sarah lied, saying, I did not laugh, because she was afraid. But the Lord said, No, you did laugh. When the men got up to leave, they looked out over Sodom. Now Abraham was walking with them to see them on their way. Then the Lord said, should I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? After all, Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all the nations on the earth will pronounce blessings on one another using his name. I have chosen him so that he may command his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just. Then the Lord will give to Abraham what he promised him. So the Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great and their sins so blatant that I must go down and see if they are as wicked as the outcry suggests. If not, I want to know. The two men turned and headed toward Sodom, but Abraham was still standing before the Lord. Abraham approached and said, Will you sweep away the godly along with the wicked? What if there are 50 godly people in the city? Will you really wipe it out and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 godly people who are in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the godly with the wicked, treating the godly and the wicked alike. Far be it from you. Will not the judge of the whole earth do what is right? So the Lord replied, If I find in the city of Sodom 50 godly people, I will spare the whole place for their sake. Then Abraham asked, Since I have undertaken to speak to the Lord, although I am but dust and ashes, what if there are five less than the fifty godly people? Will you destroy the whole city because five are lacking? He replied, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Abraham spoke to him again. What if forty are found there? He replied, I will not do it for the sake of the forty. Then Abraham said, May the Lord not be angry so that I may speak. What if thirty are found there? He replied, I will not do it if I find thirty there. 
Abraham said, since I have undertaken to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 are found there? He replied, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 20. Finally, Abraham said, may the Lord not be angry so that I may speak just once more. But what if 10 are found there? He replied, I will not destroy it for the sake of the 10. The Lord went on his way when he had finished speaking to Abraham. Then Abraham returned home. The two angels came to Sodom in the evening while Lot was sitting in the city's gateway. When Lot saw them, he got up to meet them and bowed down with his face toward the ground. He said, Here, my lords, please turn aside to your servant's house. Stay the night and wash your feet. Then you can be on your way early in the morning. No, they replied, we'll spend the night in the town square. But he urged them persistently, so they turned aside with him and entered his house. He prepared a feast for them, including bread baked without yeast, and they ate. Before they could lie down to sleep, all of the men, both young and old, from every part of the city of Sodom surrounded the house. They shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to you tonight? Bring them out so we can have sex with them. Lot went outside to them, shutting the door behind him. He said, No, my brothers, don't act so wickedly. Look, I have two daughters who have never had sexual relations with a man. Let me bring them out to you, and you can do to them whatever you please. Only don't do anything to these men, for they have come under the protection of my roof. Out of our way, they cried. And this man came to live here as a foreigner, and now he dares judge us? We'll do more harm to you than to them. They kept pressing in on Lot until they were close enough to break down the door. So the men inside reached out and pulled Lot back into the house as they shut the door. Then they struck the men who were at the door of the house, from the youngest to the oldest, with blindness. The men outside wore themselves out trying to find the door. Then the two visitors said to Lot, who else do you have here? Do you have any sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or other relatives in the city? Get them out of this place, because we are about to destroy it. The outcry against this place is so great before the Lord that he has sent us to destroy it. Then Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law, who were going to marry his daughters. He said, Quick, get out of this place, because the Lord is about to destroy the city. But his sons-in-law thought he was ridiculing them. At dawn, the angels hurried Lot along, saying, Get going. Take your wife and your two daughters who are here, or else you will be destroyed when the city is judged. When Lot hesitated, the men grabbed his hand in the hands of his wife and two daughters, because the Lord had compassion on them. They led them away and placed them outside the city. When they had brought them outside, they said, Run for your lives. Don't look behind you or stop anywhere in the valley. Escape to the mountains or you will be destroyed. But Lot said to them, No, please, Lord. Your servant has found favor with you, and you have shown me great kindness by sparing my life. But I am not able to escape to the mountains because this disaster will overtake me and I'll die. Look, this, this town over here is close enough to escape to, and it's just a little one. Let me go there. It's just a little place, isn't it? Th then I'll survive. Very well, he replied. I will grant this request too, and will not overthrow the town you mentioned. Run there quickly, for I cannot do anything until you arrive there. This incident explains why the town was called Zoar. The sun had just risen over the land as Lot reached Zoar. Then the Lord rained down sulfur and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah. It was sent down from the sky by the Lord. So he overthrew those cities in all that region, including all the inhabitants of the cities and the vegetation that grew from the ground. But Lot's wife looked back longingly and was turned into a pillar of salt. Abraham got up early in the morning and went to the place where he had stood before the Lord. 
he looked out toward Sodom and Gomorrah and all the land of that region. As he did so, he saw the smoke rising up from the land like smoke from a furnace. So when God destroyed the cities of the region, God honored Abraham's request. He removed Lot from the midst of the destruction when he destroyed the cities Lot had lived in. Lot went up from Zoar with his two daughters and settled in the mountains because he was afraid to live in Zoar. So he lived in a cave with his two daughters. Later, the older daughter said to the younger, Our father is old, and there is no man anywhere nearby to have sexual relations with us, according to the way of all the world. Come, let's make our father drunk with wine so we can have sexual relations with him and preserve our family line through our father. So that night they made their father drunk with wine, and the older daughter came and had sexual relations with her father. But he was not aware that she had had sexual relations with him and then got up. So in the morning, the older daughter said to the younger, Since I had sexual relations with my father last night, let's make him drunk again tonight. Then you go and have sexual relations with him so we can preserve our family line through our father. So they made their father drunk that night as well. And the younger one came and had sexual relations with him but he was not aware that she had sexual relations with him and then got up. In this way, both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. The older daughter gave birth to a son and named him Moab. He is the ancestor of the Moabites of today. The younger daughter also gave birth to a son and named him ben M I. He is the ancestor of the Ammonites of today. God, I want to thank you for your words today. You know, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is such a vivid one. The pictures painted in your words are, are so catastrophic of these two cities and everything in between that only one man in all of those towns could be found to be godly and you destroyed everything else incredible stories but my heart today keeps going back to the conversation you had with abraham where he comes to sodom's defense and says but if you find 50 people who are godly will you spare the city and thus spare the godly people And I think almost all of us would have had that question, God. Please don't destroy all of Seattle. There are some godly people still left here. God, please don't destroy New York. There's still godly people there. God, please don't destroy London. There's still godly people there. God, please don't destroy Cape Town. There's still godly people there. I think all of us would have made a similar observation as Abraham. But then Abraham continues to push and push and push. What if there's 45? What if there's 30? What if there's 20? Now, God, I have to be honest. I'm, I'm so in awe of you and so fearful of you. I don't, I don't think I could have had that whole conversation with you. But the reason that the conversation you had with Abraham sticks in my heart, I do want to thank you today, God. I want to thank you for the opportunity that I have of being able to communicate with you. I want to thank you for creating prayer, creating a way for you to hear us and for us to hear you. And, you know, sometimes in prayer, we need to just be quiet <laughs> and listen and quit talking so much and just hear what you want to tell us. God, I love that prayer isn't some memorized bunch of words. I love that prayer doesn't have to be structured a certain way to be right. I love that you created prayer that it is intimate and unique and personal between just you and I. Prayer time with you, God, happens throughout the day. It doesn't have to happen just in the morning time or just in the evening time. 
but I get to talk to you all day long. <laughs> and it's awesome. And it's such a blessing. And those are such graceful times throughout my day. Almost times where I feel sheltered and safe and comforted and, and warm and loved. So I'm, I'm sure that Abraham was in awe of not only getting to talk to you, but the fact that you had that conversation with him and, and were willing to spare Lot and his family. But I just thank you today for, for prayer and the opportunity that you allow us to talk to you, that there's not somebody that intercedes on our behalf, that you just listen to us. And you give us an opportunity so that we can hear you as well. In your son's name we pray. Amen.